All right, men and ladies, there's some stuff I've been trying to tell you guys for quite some time now. But let's be honest, <laughs> I'm a bit of an idiot. So we're going to listen to somebody who can actually put this stuff a little bit more eloquently than what I can muster. But before we do, we're going to get into some charts and some recent market updates that happened over the weekend. And don't forget to check out the Discord because it's totally free to join and you can stay updated with all of the updates in between my videos. And you can always get early access to all of my videos on the X app. So don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button so you can stay updated with all of the crypto news. And let's get into it. Right here we have the daily chart for Bitcoin. And the other day I was talking about this hammer candle that actually formed. And right now it looks like we might be actually making a higher low right here. As long as we continue to stay on the top of this trend line right here, it looks like this MACD on the four hourly chart actually wants to flip to the upside. And it looks like we might be getting ready for an imminent breakout any minute now. One catalyst that could send us breaking out to the upside is that we actually have these FOMC meeting minutes or the Fed minutes coming out later this week on Wednesday. And it looks like this might actually be a catalyst because if they are talking about lowering interest rates or continuing with the pause in the minutes, then this could be a boon for the whole market and it could send people rushing back into assets. In other good news, but not necessarily immediately good for the price action, here we have an article that says Donald Trump has revealed substantial crypto holdings, but it's not in Bitcoin. Supposedly he owns a whole bunch of Ethereum and Donald Trump has also been selling all kinds of NFTs to fund his campaign, supposedly. And I think that if we continue to see Donald Trump coming out in favor of cryptocurrency and he actually makes it an issue that he's backing in his campaign, then we could see the crypto community rally behind Donald Trump. And it might become more of a partisan issue than it is already, meaning that the Republicans could totally back it up and try to push through positive regulations and just pull for the industry in general, which could be very positive and lead a lot of institutions and big players in the game to actually feel more comfortable investing in the space. And here we have another definitely positive piece of news, but not necessarily great for the price action. This article by Yahoo Finance says, the judge has revoked bail for FTX founder Sam Bateman Freed. It says a Manhattan Federal District Court judge has revoked the bail of FTX founder Sam Bateman Freed just months before his scheduled trial. Federal prosecutors alleged that Sam Bateman Freed had violated his bail agreement by communicating with New York Times reporter about his former girlfriend and primary witness of the prosecution, Carolyn Ellison. It says, according to prosecutors, Bateman Freed shared the, with the Times reporters Ellison's personal diary-like writings, explaining her frustrations with the position leading Alameda. As you know, he's been staying in a multi-million dollar mansion on bond, and he's just been under house arrest, talking to the media, and supposedly trying to intimidate people like Carolyn Ellison. And this has apparently landed him in a Brooklyn jail with notorious poor conditions. All right, now let's listen to some clips from the Wealthy On podcast, where Lance Roberts says a bunch of stuff that I've been trying to say, but he actually says it in more detail and a lot more eloquently than I can do. The CBO is the Congressional Budget Outlook, and the Congressional Budget Office regularly pr publishes reports presenting its baseline projection for what the federal budget and the economy will look like in the current year over the, and over the next 10 years. Lance Roberts is about to present us with some of this information, and the reason why it's so significant is because it comes straight from the Congressional Budget Office. And this is a government entity that actually usually puts out more positive information than what actually comes to fruition, meaning that their projections, while they do seem a little bit extreme, might actually be significantly more conservative than what it appears. I've recreated this analysis from the CBO, which just came out and they projected, um, the CBO projected the U.S. debt through 2053 um, I recreated it, put an exponential trend line on it and ran it out through 2050. And, and the reason is, is so, so there's two important factors about this. One is, again, going back and talking about interest rates and you know, where they're ultimately headed and why interest rates can't go up. If you're talking about the, and, and you know, the CBO is probably wrong, it'll probably be worse than this because the CBO is always wrong. They always under project you know, what, what actually turns out to be the case. So uh, unfortunately that red line, which is the exponential uh, growth line of debt uh, since 1967 is probably the right number. So you're probably talking somewhere uh, a much bigger debt level by 2050 than what the CBO is projecting, but let's just go with their numbers. 
Um, in order to issue that much debt, you can't have higher rates, period. And this is why. Okay, so to simplify this chart a little bit, this line right here is where they expect the U.S. government debt to be in the next 10 years or so. And right now we have about $32 trillion worth of debt, which means that we're right about here. This means that if you think the government has been spending a lot of money over the past five years, you've seen nothing yet because we've got this parabolic movement incoming in the next decade. The Bank of Japan owns 80% of the bond market in order to keep interest rates capped below 1%. They've got to keep interest rates low in order to issue that debt. So if the CBO is going to issue that much debt, so sorry, if the U.S. government is going to issue the debt that the CBO is projecting, the Federal Reserve, this is this is this is not what the CBO projected, but the Federal Reserve will have to monetize up to 30 percent of that debt to keep interest rates low enough for them to issue that debt. So you're talking about the Federal Reserve having a balance sheet north of 40 trillion by 2050. This is what I've been trying to say over and over again in a lot of my previous videos. As the debt continues to rise and they continue to raise interest rates, it's going to become more and more difficult for them to service that debt. This means that as people are less and less able to continue to buy treasuries and people trust our treasuries less and less, eventually the market is going to be saturated and people aren't going to be able to absorb those treasuries anymore and the Fed is going to have to add them back to their balance sheet. Whenever that happens, that's going to pump massive liquidity back into the system and people are going to be scrambling to get their hands on hard assets as the debasement of the currency continues to make people panic and people rush into assets that are stores of value that people can actually trust that aren't government assets because everybody is slowly losing faith in the government and the U.S. dollar. If you just take a look at the long-term trajectory of deficits um, and then the increase in the deficits, of course, that required more debt to be issued. Um, you know, we just go back to the basic functionality that in order to issue debt, we can't have higher interest rates. And at some point, when interest rates rise enough for four and a quarter, and you start to see banks fail again because of the suppression of their collateral, or you see uh, bankruptcies rise because companies can't refinance their debt, the government and the Federal Reserve and central banks globally will step in to be the buyer of bonds in order to suppress interest rates. And, and you don't need to look any further than this uh, chart right here. The reason we had interest rates low for so long and from 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, we had zero interest rates virtually by, by federal governments and central banks were massively expanding their balance sheet. They were the buyers of all this issuance of bonds. Over the last year or so, the reason interest rates have come up some is because bank, central banks are trying to reduce their balance sheet a little. They're trying to give themselves a little bit of buying power because they know that at some point very soon, that recession is going to come. They are going to have to step in and cut rates back to zero, and they are going to have to start to monetize debt again in order to keep rates low enough for, for corporations to refinance, for governments to refinance, for um, you know, the, debt, the, the debt to be issued in an environment that doesn't cause financial strains throughout the credit system. So they are going to have to start buying bonds again. So we do not have, and this is why I'm showing you that chart a second ago uh, with the CBO projection. The CBO is talking about this increase in debt, but the Federal Reserve is going to have to monetize up to 30% of that debt just to keep it issuable. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm a little bit of an idiot. So I was wrong whenever I was saying that I thought the Fed was actually going to have to do a pivot whenever they raised the debt ceiling. I failed to take into account that people were actually going to be able to absorb a lot of those treasuries that were being issued. But that's going to come to an end soon, and whenever that happens, the Fed is going to have to add that stuff back to their balance sheet, and it's going to continue to rise. This is going to continue to debase our currency, and over time, that's going to force all of that printed currency into stuff like Bitcoin and gold. It's just a matter of time until the market is totally saturated and it can't continue to absorb these treasuries and bonds. Whenever that happens, the Fed is going to start adding them back to the balance sheet. And I think that's whenever everything is going to start skyrocketing. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. How long is it going to be until the Fed starts to expand their balance sheet again? Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. This is Abisu. He's named after one of the seven lucky gods of Japan.
According to legend, he will bring wealth and prosperity to anybody who evokes his name. So don't forget to write his name in the comments or you'll bring dishonor to your whole portfolio. And check out this video right here. Say goodbye, Abisu.